things you don't want. So make sure that whatever carrot oil you choose is between a zero and a three. Hey YouTube, what's going on? Super excited for this video. If you are new to my channel, welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you are here. I'm a cosmetic chemist specializing in natural hair care and the creator of Curly Chemistry, where I help you guys understand your hair and ingredients from a cosmetic chemist perspective. And I also help you guys start hair care lines as well. And today we are talking about the secret life of oils on your scalp. Okay, like what are they doing? What are their purpose? what you should be avoiding that's hindering hair growth and how to really benefit from this thing and take it to the next level to start seeing some amazing hair growth okay so stay tuned. okay so when it comes to oils and our scalp it's really coming from two main sources either it's coming from the sebaceous glands within our scalp or it's coming from us adding oil topically to our scalp. Now sebaceous glands are glands in the dermis part of our scalp and they release sebum to the scalp and into our hair, acting as a protective barrier for the scalp and the hair and also helping to lock in moisture as well. Now, on the flip side, a scalp that produces too much oil, if you have overactive sebaceous glands, this can lead to an overproduction of yeast, which can then lead to dandruff, and then this can also spiral inflammation within the scalp, which can then lead to scalp dermatitis. So oil is great, but on the flip side, it can also be kind of like a, a double-edged sword. So what do you want to do if you have this, or even for prevention methods, the first thing you really want to do is have a healthy diet. We don't want to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it anyway, okay? You want to drink tons of water. You want to have more veggies and fruits than you do fast food and processed food. That's going to be huge on your scalp and hair health. Number two, pH balance. This is why aloe vera gel treatments on the scalp and apple cider vinegar products that are pH balance is so important because you want to make sure that the environment, the temperature of your scalp is optimal. Unfortunately, yeast dandruff inflammation thrives when the scalp microbiome, the scalp environment is off the chain. So there's some things you wanna keep in mind when it comes to the sebum on the scalp, especially if you have uh, dandruff or any scalp condition. Okay, now the second source is gonna be carrier oils. Now usually when we are adding oils to our scalp, that is carrier oils. We're adding it topically to our scalp. Olive oil, avocado, grapeseed, jojoba, argan, things like that. Now. Why is it so important? Because those who typically have a dry scalp, it's because the epidermis part of the scalp that contains corneal sites are disrupted. So think of it as a tightly packed unit. And if we are constantly scratching and itching our scalp, we are low key messing up with the cells of the epidermis, at least the, the outer layer of the scalp. And when you have disruption, it allows water that should be helping to maintain a moisturized scalp to easily escape and go out and evaporate off of our scalp. So this is where carrier oils come into play to help give us a protective barrier that is going to lock in moisture. So carrier oils do a great job at that. Hence the reason why those have a dry scalp, I always recommend when you get out the shower, put some oil or some type of occlusive ingredient, whether that's a hair grease or um, some type of jojoba oil, for example, on the scalp to lock in that moisture because your shower day is the day your hair and your scalp is going to experience the most amount of water, AKA moisture. Next is going to be one of the purposes to your carrier oil on the scalp, the secret life, is when we are carrying hair growth actives deep within the scalp. Essential oils, which we'll talk about in a second, are very potent and they're very strong. And ideally, we should not be putting them directly on the scalp because they can irritate our scalp. Hence the reason why we dilute them, like literally a few drops into like a bottle of oil because the carrier oil literally carries these essential oils that are actually small enough to get deep within the dermis to activate hair growth pathways so we can start seeing some healthy growing long hair. And I always get asked like, what are your favorite carrier oils? And I pretty much list all of them in the Natural Hair Care Wisdom flashcards. But honestly, I love avocado, hemp, just to name a few, you cannot go wrong with those. Now, what to avoid? 
the biggest thing I would say to avoid is oils that are high in comedogenicity. So every oil has a comedogenic level. You guys already know. If you guys are part of the curly chemistry community, you already know. If you're not a part of the curly chemistry community, all you have to do is subscribe to this channel. Make sure the are on. But I mention very often how comedogenic oils play a huge role in how your scalp responds. Every oil, every butter has a comedogenic rating. And basically this rating represents the ability of that oil or butter to clog the pores of the skin, the scalp, same thing. So I always say for your scalp, anything between zero and three is completely fine. Four, five, like coconut oil, wheat germ oil, I do not recommend for the scalp. Because the last thing you want is clogged pores, which can then lead to folliculitis, inflammation, inflammation of the scalp. Uh, dermatitis, itchiness, red patches, all the things you don't want. So make sure that whatever care oil you choose is between a zero and a three. And I will provide a list for you guys below as well. All right guys, hope you have enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thank you guys so much for liking this video and subscribing to Curly Chemistry. Once again, to be a part of the Curly Chemistry community, all you have to do is subscribe to this channel and make sure notifications are on to stay in the loop for more Curly Chemistry content. And of course, I have a question for you what is your absolute favorite essential oil maybe you make your own oils at home or maybe you just learned of something recently and you're like hmm interested in trying that out what is that essential oil that you are absolutely loving your favorite one or something you just learned about comment below let me know I'll go first I'll say my favorite one right now is probably I'm loving rosemary. I'm really loving rosemary at the moment. So that's my choice. Comment below and I cannot wait to the conversation with you. If you're interested in learning more about ingredients, especially all these oils we just talked about, check out the Natural Hair Care Wisdom flashcards and the Curly Girls Got to Hair Care Ingredients. I have a link below for you as well, including a promo code, so definitely check that out. And if you're interested in starting a hair care line, no matter where you are in the world, I have a link below for you as well. All right guys, I love you and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.